Today's training is going to cover importing. Uh, several of the projects that will be used in this tutorial are among these. And we'll be looking at how to import in different vectors, images, and 3D models into the software and then bring them out to the shop bot where we'll finally cut them out. For this first example, we're going to import in some vectors and we need to look out for duplicate vectors. And we're going to use the map of the United States for this. And what we're doing here is we're actually importing in vectors that were created in a different CAD software. And the first thing we'll, again we'll look at is the different types of file formats that come in. We're going to, in this case, import in a DXF file format. And this can frequently asked questions can be found if you go into the vector software, look at help, and then help contents. So here's a file that we're going to start. It's the size of a ShopBot desktop. We have our 24 by 18 and set up to your material thickness. And we can do a file import or use the icon here, import vectors from a file. And again, here you see DXF and there's your file formats down here as well. So we'll bring in the 50 states. And if we were just to say, okay, this looks good, switch over here to toolpath, grab this thing, and hit calculate, we're going to get an error message saying you have 61 duplicate vectors that are identified. And they are going to ignore them. So the software will catch the duplicate vectors. But you should also manually check the software, the DXF files, or whatever vectors that it is that you are importing when you first bring them in. So I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel and close. And the first thing I like to do when I import something in is just simply right click, go here to select all duplicate vectors, and you can see that it had selected all the 50 states. And when I zoom in, it's not that clear dash pink line that we normally see. Because if I zoom out here enough, use the arrow keys on my keyboard, you see that there is a set of vectors directly on top of each other. So the software would catch this. It would not cut it twice. But it's good for you to, when you first come in, to actually get that duplicate vector, delete it, and then when you go to toolpath it, select your vectors and hit calculate. No error message because there's no duplicate vectors and then there you go. Let's take a look at this cutting. So this is on a HDPE material. This is color core. This is actually a blue on the exterior and white on the inside. You can get it in variation of different thicknesses and different colors but I thought this would look good hanging up in our training area and people can start marking where they're from. So the next one's going to have to be a globe since we sell a lot of tools internationally. Another thing to look out for when importing vectors from another program is open vectors. And just for anybody that's not familiar with that term yet, your normal vector that you see here, your circle, uh, if I go into node editing you can see this green square and that's the start point of the cut. Well, in a closed vector, whether it be circle, rectangle, different polygon, uh, the, the entry point where it starts cutting is also the exit point where it finishes the cut. So this cut would go all the way around this vector, finish and start at the same place. When you have an open vector, what you have is a start point and a stop point of a cut that are clearly in two different spots. So nothing wrong with open or closed vectors. That's what they are in the program. But what you have to look out for when you're importing are vectors that are open but looked closed. So let's demonstrate this. Uh, before we use the icons, again, you could also go up here to File, Import, Import Vectors, and I'm going to just bring in a logo. So here's the ShopBot logo, and it looks great. If I center it in the material here, you would see this looks just like a logo that we could go ahead and v-carve or cut around whatever that is that we're going to look but what would happen is we came over here and to toolpath that it, it's going to say ignoring certain vectors because they're open so if i show demonstrate this by clicking see how the full s is not highlighted all these are brought in and these points they may be close they may look like they're touching but there's a gap between them so these are supposed to be closed vectors for coming over here to toolpath but at this point these are still open vectors and this would not allow us to go through with the type of cut we would like to do so the simple thing you can do when you bring in something and you never know what you're getting some of these files from so I like to go right click select all open vectors and notice everything on here is open because everything's cut apart and the 
points are not joined together. So by right clicking, select all open vectors, there is a join open vectors function or a shortcut key on the keyboard which is J. And when we go into here what we can see is we currently have 0 closed and 37 open. By hitting this join command we will have 16 closed vectors. And I like to leave this as a small tolerance. What that does is that keeps the endpoints from being moved from where they are and normally if this is something that they're not joining I'll go back to where it was originally designed in and try to clean it up from there. So I'll go ahead and click join, close, and now when we look at these they're a closed vector. The cut's going to be able to go all the way around the, either the outside or the inside of that vector because it's now closed. To make this one a little more interesting, you can see it took a clear piece of acrylic and the VCARV software used the create uh, repeating vector texture patterns. It kind of looks like a topographical map. So I flipped the ShopBot logo over with a mirror, used the uh, repeating vector function, and then what's really neat about this at the end is you you blow all your plastic away and you could backlight this with some sort of a neon but just to make things different for a cool sign around the shop was we took put a piece of stained red oak behind it alright for this next example let's see how you can import in an image and then what we will do is vectorize that image so we can format it correctly to cut it out so what we're looking at here are different types of images that you can bring in and it is advised that the higher the resolution image that you can bring in usually will go with a better transition to vectorizing it. So uh, I like a PNG, the most recent file format with a good range of properties. Usually you can find a good PNG or just JPEG, but these are the different formats that you can get into for images. So with that, let's just use you know Google as a search engine here. We're using Google Chrome. We could have just typed it in up there, but let's just go funny stop sign. And when you go to images, you know, it brings up several different ones. But I like to go up here to where the settings are and the tools and come over here to say, well, first usage rights. I want to make sure I can reuse this. And you could search here for a different color type. Line drawing a lot is really nice to do. But for this one here, just keep it simple for today's. This one's kind of neat. And make sure, again, it says something with the usage that you can use and save the picture. And then we're going to bring it into the software and vectorize it. For this example, we have a 12 by 12 work surface, and we are going to do a file import, or you have the icon here which says import bitmap for tracing. And we'll grab our picture that we saved and bring this in. Notice the software automatically creates a bitmap layer, and it puts this on your bitmap layer. So we're going to still work with layer one for our vectors when we vectorize this, but we'll be able to turn this off without deleting it when we're done tracing. And then uh, once this is selected, I would go to Trace Bitmap, and this says Fit Vectors to Selected Bitmap. And that's exactly what we're looking to do here. So if you have a nice high resolution picture, you're going to get a lot easier trace, lower pixels. You're going to have to spend more time messing with the different noise filters and corner fits. But I'm going to go ahead and trace this in black and white. I have I like doing so because if I zoom way in here you can see there's different shades of reds and grays along the edge. This one being a pretty much solid color of red and white. This will get rid of any pixels or shadows by just leaving this in black and white. And your corner fits and noise filters, these have to deal with fitting around these jagged edges. And again, depending on the resolution of the video picture is where you'll mess with these and then the bitmap fading is for graying this making this darker or lighter I'm gonna leave everything as default uh, you have the selection if you want to group these or leave them non group I like prefer them to be uh, non group because I'm gonna come in here and edit them later so let's hit apply and close and this is where the layer function is nice because I want the picture in case I need it for later but I don't want to see it right now so I am going to turn off the bitmap layer and hit close and we can see that we have some noise that we don't want and we'll select this and delete this and we notice too we've got you know multiple lines along here that don't always connect so as far as the border portion it didn't have the, a really good trace but the text part looks good so I'm just going to use the software 
select everything, deselect by holding the shift key down, select my text, and I'm just going to go ahead and delete those. Use the function up here for draw polygon, eight-sided polygon, and I'm going to go ahead and just draw the eight side that you'd have for a stop sign. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to select my text, center that in the material, go ahead, take my stop sign, center that in the material. Actually, just by preference, I'd like to move this up. And with this here, if I like this, I go, I go ahead and say, all right, this would be a good line. We noticed that it had a double line before. So to keep it in proportion, I'm just going to use the offset. Offset it out. If I wanted to create the sharp corners that the stop sign would have, I could go Edit Undo and select Create Sharp Offset Corners. And the software now does a nice sharp offset. And I can come over here and toolpath this with a V-carve toolpath and have a pretty neat sign that comes out. Don't panic. It says this is a simple V-carve. We're just going to use some two-sided tape on a piece of painted plywood. That's enough to hold it down for what we're carving away. And then there we go. It's doing the along the vectors for the stop sign for the outer border that we had. And then it goes in and starts V-carving the font. So that was a picture that we got and vectorized it. And you can do this with a lot more detailed pictures as well. All right. So the sign came out great, but there's one thing I wanted to go back and change. It was just driving me a little crazy here, is the top of the I and the N are touching each other. And all the other text isn't. So this one thing is just an eyesore to me. So what we're going to do is go back into the software and edit this. And I would have, I should have seen it right here too in my 3D preview. It just it didn't seem to bother me as much until I saw it in person. So again, the reason I'm doing this is just purely... Uh, personal reasons and it's just that every other letter is separated except for the N and the I so cosmetic that's all so what I'm gonna do is go back to the drawing side and in 2d view what we're gonna do is look at node editing now for someone that hasn't used node editing yet get familiar underneath help there's a lot of content about that both in written and video format but just to give you a quick intro on node editing into this training uh, I'd come in here I node edit and I can right click my mouse and I can say hey I want to cut this vector here and I want to cut this vector here and what I've done now is created two open vectors so there's the top of the I and here's the N these are open vectors and just to select the, this move this over so it wouldn't be touching just by moving the spacing we'll go back to what we did earlier in this tutorial or closing vectors or looking for open vectors and you can close them by right here. You can do a straight line, a curve, or move the endpoints where it brings them together. You could also do it while you're in node editing where I can right click and say close this vector with the smooth curve. If I wanted to edit the arc a little bit on that, and I sure could. And then again, this was just a personal preference. However, if you're going to go in and do editing like this, the toolpath that you have saved from earlier has not picked up the changes. If I was in preview with this right now, turn this on, it's still seeing this over here. So I would need to go back into the toolpath by double clicking on it. Since I've modified and edited it, these are now different vectors, so it does not have those selected. So I will reselect those, hit calculate, and when I reset my preview and preview this toolpath, the end and the eye are now not attached, and I like the looks of that sign better. For this last import, we're actually going to import in a 3D model. So here's an example of the two moons that we're going to cut. Uh, and again, in the software you can see our 3D models. These are the different file formats. The STL is probably being the most commonly shared out there, but we'll show you how to bring in another one of these. So here we are again in VCar Pro. It's a simple file, 12 by 12. And now we switch down here to modeling tab. Modeling allows us to have a few features for 3D where we can import in a component or 3D model. I'll go ahead and bring in the first moon. And let's see, we'll bring in the second moon. And the reason to bring in two in is just to show you what you're able to do with the feature. I can actually take the two of these and overlap them a little bit. 
And now when I have both of them highlighted, I can actually toolpath these. So let's open up the toolpath side here. We're going to work back and forth between the drawing and the toolpathing side to get through the rest of this example. So we brought them in. You could resize it, set it up however. Uh, let me just go into a finishing toolpath with my ball nose. We'll go around the model boundary. And you can see that it's very simple to just import these in and toolpath and see what they look like. I'll break the screen here so you can see the 2D and the 3D. But going to cut these out like they see in the example is a little bit different of a process. So we actually have to come over here back to these and put a vector around these. And this isn't the same as tracing a bitmap because these are already 3D models. So what we do in this example, back into the modeling tab, you have a feature to create ve vector boundary from selected components. And you can go ahead and click that. And if I zoom in here, it shows you that it actually put a line all the way around the edge of these models. So now when I come back over to do the tool pathing side of it, and I go ahead and select a profile tool path to do my cut around, I can come in here, select the pink dash line, and set the sub cut on the outside, and hit calculate. And you can see with the previewer turned on down here for solid, that it's now going to cut all the way around this. And notice that that big quarter inch bit that we're using isn't able to get in and get a nice clean cut inside of these. So you might look for a smaller bit. But let's go ahead and preview this so you can see. I'm going to get rid of some of the waste. And what you can see though on here is there is a little bit of a lip going around. And just a trick I like to do with the profile toolpath if I was going to cut this out. I just come in here to profile and just give it an allowance of say negative 0.02 and hit calculate and what you're doing with the negative 02 is you're actually cutting into the vector a little bit the model so I'm gonna leave this preview already on so you can see that there's the edge and I'll just rerun that toolpath and you can see it goes in there and cleans up that edge so that's a simple way to bring in a model and toolpath it and cut it out with vCarve Pro. Now for some of you that are going to get into more of this modeling where you want to have a better transition line between the two, or you want to come in and do any uh, editing around the edges of these stuff, that's where you might want to look into the big brother of vCarve Pro which is called Aspire and that will allow you to actually manipulate the model in more ways than this. But this is simple enough, there's a little bit of cleanup I have to do with the sander in here uh, where again if you had the Aspire software you could go in here and smooth some of these transitions out between the models. But I'm happy with this, and that would be importing for a 3D. So for the video, I actually cut out a much larger version of this. So you can see that's out of some one and a half inch walnut. This is put down on a ShopBot 9648. This one did need a roughing tool path since it was so much deeper. But this is the same thing as the one we just brought in, just a scaled up larger. After the roughing toolpath, you can see the shot bot going back and forth, doing the finishing toolpath. And again, like I said earlier, all you have to do at the end is sanding around the edges, a little cleanup for the 3D model, and do the last profile cut around it, and then you have successfully imported in a 3D model. Thank you for joining today's training on importing. We covered vectors that were open and duplicate. We looked at images and what to bring in and how to trace them. And we finished up with 3D models. So hope these tips are useful to help you when you're importing in from other softwares into your vectric software and then toolpath out to your shop bot. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time.